but we had to put it together, you know, like the DVDs themselves. Uh, while they were being edited, I had to work on the audio elements of it. <coughs> and to be honest, I had them send me, I had you guys send me, um, a quick time so I could, while I'm mixing, sort of get a sort of an idea of what it looked like. So if I was going to add an echo or something, I could sort of see how it was going to work in context to the show. And during that time, it was the first time I actually had an opportunity to participate in them. Because during the recordings of them and during the preparations for them, it was so much effort just to kind of keep our proverbial together that I wasn't actually physically or mentally there while we were doing. I mean, in a way, of course, but I was so focused on not kind of uh, losing sight of what needed to be done that uh, it was only when I was mixing it and looking at the quick time, I was like, wow, that was actually really cool. And so I processed it in that sense, in that, oh, it was really cool and I'm glad we did it and it was uh, really rewarding to actually have been able to pull it off. But immediately after that, I went into the recording of my new record and uh, the mix of the audio for By a Thread was, uh, was a lot of effort as well, so I've just been so busy and compounding that with life and family and mowing the lawn, it's, I thought about it for 10 minutes, essentially. I think we had the budget to do one DVD, and we ended up putting out nine discs, and we're selling it for 45 pounds or something like that. And so ultimately, with uh, our new management and the label, there's been this learning curve between us as well as getting to know each other, because I've never spent any time uh, monetizing what I do, ever. I have no problems with giving shit away. But we're all of a sudden in a situation where the label is saying, well, in order to take this to the point where you can maybe do some of these epic things that you've been planning, we need to make a bit of money. We need to monetize this in some sense. So it's been this um, uh, interesting learning curve between us all where I'm going, oh, I don't want to charge for that. And they say, well, you have to charge for that. And so this maybe is an example of that compromise where we had a very limited budget to do one DVD, but we managed to do a lot of work with it based on the energy and the passion of the people involved, we're still able to sell it for relatively little and still have good packaging and, and all this. And I guess the ultimate goal of that is to maybe catch up for 20 years of me doing it in a way that didn't capitalize on the effort that went into it. So now maybe people will say, well, you know, 45 bucks or whatever is a reasonable price. And then they get it. And, you know, keeping in mind the limitations that we, you know, that I had in order to put the shows together and, and the whole element of it, I'm hoping that it will act as an advertisement for the band. And I, I mean, I'm, I'm, incredibly, I'm incredibly proud of it. I think it's great. And it is comes out, what, three months after the last box set we did? So productivity is not our main problem. <laughs> experience that um, I don't think you're gonna get by going to a show and myself and the band were there so in that sense it's a show I guess and it's a retrospective of those four uh, concerts that a lot of the people that were at the screening I recognized from the show like they were there so being there with them again and sort of reliving it under that sort of uh, awkward circumstance for everybody a bunch of people sitting there in a theater like watching me run around like a banana and uh, you know these shows that they were possibly already there for and at first because there was a button pressed up in the uh, up in the uh, uh, projection booth that put the stereo mix into 5.1 so when it first started playing I was sitting in the back and I was like oh my god this doesn't sound right 
like the samples were really loud, there's no kick, and, and so I ran around like a blue ass fly trying to figure out what the problem was, and then uh, we all we ended up figuring it out. But I spent the first half an hour of the screening sort of doing another dubious improv routine to the audience to try and, you know, uh, uh, gloss over that in a similar way to what happened in, at Bloodstock a few years ago, to be honest. And uh, at first, I often think to myself, oh, you know, you're embarrassed or, or what have you. But I think what it really comes down to is the fact that I've always been a perfectionist in my mind, but in practical reality, I'm so far from being perfect that there's like this interesting irony to it all. But I think what also I personally find endearing about what we do is it is grassroots. There's one person that edited all these discs. One person. And it's just me doing the audio. It's like two people. And then we put out this box set that maybe on the surface is competing with people with like reams of money. You know? But because we don't have that I think there's really something to be said for the effort that's involved with it. I was watching it last night and during the deconstruction stuff, there's all, at the time I'm thinking, all oh, my videos, my puppets and everything for the deconstruction stuff, it's so budget, it's so back lounge, I don't know what I'm doing. But then seeing it up on screen, it just reeks of effort. And in a way, I think that's what makes it cool. And I think that last night with the screening and any sort of hiccups that we had, ultimately is just another example of what it is that we do. It's, it's this grassroots, kind of thing that we're trying to be as uh, epic as possible with very little personnel and very little money and I think that's you know what I think it's cool in my mind I like to see it as this big perfect thing right but in practical reality maybe what makes it endearing is the fact that it's just people trying to make something that's beyond us at this point right so I think in that sense it, it turned out really well because it was really bizarre and really cool and at the end of it everybody that stayed around said they really enjoyed it and so did I so If there's anything that I'm okay with, it's commitment. I'm okay with committing to periods of time. I'm okay to committing to ideas and people. I'm okay with that. In fact, I think that commitment, in a lot of ways, makes it a lot easier to be productive because you eliminate all those options that aren't there. So, committing to a period of time is as par for the course, right? But. <clears throat> At the same time, I also uh, think that everything I do is just a document of a period of time. The Devin Townsend Project, Strapping Young Lad, Epicloud, Ziltoid, all of that, it, it's just a direct reflection of what the current frame of mind, I and the people who are involved with what I do, find ourselves in. And so I think you can be honest with that and you can be articulate with that um, as far as you can in order to represent it to the best of your ability and then you can stand back and say well do I actually like it <laughs> you know like there's been things that I've done I've spent immense amounts of energy in getting right that I don't like but that's exactly what I felt like doing at the time and so yeah it's a document of a period of time in the same way that everything else I do is right